over 32 years. Uh, Joanna Macy has been an inspiration and guiding light in anti-nuclear activism for over three decades. Her effort to find hope in the midst of a devastating nuclear age coming of age gave strength and vision to those surviving after the Chernobyl disasters and those opposing nuclear proliferation. What is now known as the work that reconnects has allowed activists to have hope and create visions of a sustainable future in spite of the political, economic, and multiply discriminating social orders we continue to face. In December of 2010, and one month prior to becoming the director of the Alliance, a dear friend handed me Joanna's book, The Work That Reconnects. After witnessing my own personal meltdown, as I tried to muster the focus to continue my work. Reading Joanna's book changed my life and has inspired me to integrate this hope into how the Snake River Alliance does its work. And that includes the staff, our members, and the larger Snake River Alliance community. But Joanna would not be here tonight in Boise without the passion and vision of many caring community members. And I want to take a second to thank and recognize a few of those people. Beth Keegan and Susan Carroll um, were part of the planting the seeds that um, have brought Joanna here today. Um, Genevieve Emerson, if you wouldn't mind standing up, Genevieve. <laughs> and, uh, and Trish Robertson. part of a, a core group of volunteers we've been meeting every week basically or near that um, since this summer and then finally um, please stand Dan Walters <laughs> Dan is truly the engine that has driven um, this workshop this program as many of you know <laughs> and we really wouldn't be here without Dan's stamina and vision so thank you so much Dan people, including the Alliance staff, the Alliance board, and many members of the community who are listed on the program tonight, um, supported and inspired Joanna's visit to Boise. And it couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, on March 11, 2011, uh, the Fukushima nuclear disaster began to unfold. And we were reminded, once again, as a global community, that the risks associated with nuclear power are unacceptable. They're unacceptable to public health and they're economically unacceptable, and they are not the path we should take forward as a global community, as a national community, or as a local community. And so in the midst of this, we have Joanna Macy here in Idaho. And in Idaho, we are, tracing, or we are facing a trifecta of threats from the nuclear industry. Already existing in Idaho is plutonium contaminated waste from weapons production above the Snake River aquifer that the Department of Energy is working to clean up, and that the Snake River Alliance is actively educating the public on and deeply involved in. But there will be plutonium contamination above the Snake River aquifer till the end of time. In addition, there is a company called Ariva that is considering making more waste in Idaho, a French government-owned company that wants to build an enrichment factory in Idaho, which is the factory that, that helps produce the fuel for nuclear reactors. It's a very dangerous waste stream called depleted uranium hexafluoride, which you'll hear a little bit more about tonight. And additionally, all of the nation's waste from nuclear power reactors is being um, addressed by the Blue Ribbon Commission on America's Nuclear Future. And uh, the federal, this, this kind of federally appointed body is trying to determine what to do with that waste. And Idaho is on the radar screen for potential consolidated storage. And you know, they'll say that it's interim storage, but interim has actually been lifetimes when it comes to nuclear waste. The Snake River Alliance is actively working on all three of these issues. And we need Joanna to help us look at these threats, name them, and then act as a community to move in a better direction. And that, and that doesn't take some enormous miracle or act. It's about raising our voices, empowering ourselves in our community, and speaking up as, as the people in this state to say, no, 
we are going to be part of a better future. We want a nuclear free future in Idaho. So all of us and beyond can be part of what Joanna calls a great turning. Tonight is the beginning of that better vision. Welcome to the Alliance community. We are so happy that you're here. Tonight, we will hear from Joanna Macy and local and visiting anti-nuclear activists. Uh, Lisa Young, who is the Snake River Alliance Clean Energy Organizer, will be giving a presentation on the nuclear fuel cycle. And we are very lucky to have Mary Olson from the Nuclear Information and Resource Service come all the way across the continent to speak to us tonight about nuclear issues. I would like to welcome a true treasure, Joanna Macy. Thank you. Boil water, emit it into the air, the water, the soil, material that our ancestor didn't know about. But we are the generation in which that is being made in our name, used as an instrument of foreign policy, and uh, it will be for that which I've come to believe that we, our generation, by generating the people alive now, will be identified with that for hundreds and thousands of generations to come. Those generations who will take their place Hopefully we're working that they will have air to breathe and clean water to drink and soil to grow food from, who will follow after us. When they look back at us, I think that if this will be what, if they know about it, if they will know what is making them sick, that we will be identified as the generation that produced the poison fire the radioactive materials. They may wonder why, or why we continue to produce them when we didn't know how to take care of them, where we leave no stories behind for them as to how they can protect themselves, that we proceed to hide it in places deep under the ground or dumped in the seas or dumped in the river or tamped down just as long as we don't have to look at it. Now, this has been pretty uncomfortable for me. I didn't plan to start this way. I planned to be much more charming at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. started you. I, I realized that uh, three four decades ago, four, and uh, I thought, this will define my sense of what I can uh, do for my people and for my planet and for the ongoingness of life. And it has had such a deep impact on me. Uh, I know it sounds depressing, but you don't stop there. There's too much happening that's depressing in our world for you to stop there. You just blink your eyes, take a deep breath, take a second look, and say, we are going to change this. And the future ones, hundreds of generations, thousands of generations, are counting on us who are alive now to clean this up. And what we can't clean up, we're going to put it in condition and guardianship so they'll know what to do with it and how to take care of it. It's a low-tech operation. It's not complicated. Well, you know what's happened for me and my colleagues in this has been like uh, grace. 
a sense of my place in time, our place in time. Because all of us who are sitting here in the, this evening, uh, the life that is breathing our lungs, that is beating our heart, that life did not begin with our birth. It went back and back and back. What's beautiful now in our time is that we're beginning to remember that. It's called the new story, the universe story, the new cosmology, as we realize that with the first primal flaring forth, life began a journey and that it's like one gesture. And that we've been there in a sense all along. That every particle and every molecule of our bodies goes back that far. And that we have been brought here thanks to our many, many ancestors to this moment where we can look with fresh eyes at each other and the meaning of our life now. And that we can uh, take our place in this unfolding story and feel that it wants to go on. Life wants to go on. We go through very complicated procedures in our life to be sure that that does, you know. <laughs> very ritualistic and not so, courting procedures and all kinds of things to be sure that the story goes on. And to feel that those future ones are somehow in uh, our can, uh, on the screen for us. So thanks to the poison fire, I have helped and we're going to be doing some of this deep time work at the workshop uh, that um, the ancestors and the future ones are uh, ready to be summoned and can be present to us uh, in this time, that they can give us the courage and give us the solidarity uh, that, and that can awaken. You know, this great guy uh, interviewed me yesterday and he came up with the term, Jeff, I think you're here, and um, on radio, and he said, oh, your work helps people discover their inner solidarity. <laughs> That's the truth. So does the Snake River Alliance, by the way. So that we, uh, this is a time for us to come alive to the wider reaches of our life. And I can't tell you how grateful I am to be here with the Snake River Alliance. It was actually back 25 years ago, 27 years ago, I first came, and then again four years ago. So, um, you know, our choices, the amazing thing is that we, uh, through all these eons of our evolution from the amoeba, uh, we have grown this self-reflexive consciousness that allows us to do what? To make choices. We can decide to do this and not to do that. And how we enjoy that freedom to make choices, where we find our joy, where we find our appetite, depends a lot about which story we buy into. Which story, and by story I mean a version of reality how we can uh, take in the data of being alive in our time and see what's going on and how we make sense of that. 